Now, we covered a lot here at Faith Life recently about the blessing of Abraham. Abraham, of course, could not enter into heaven before Jesus did. But God made covenant with Abraham, which gave God legality to, bring, to be involved with Abraham and his lineage. Only his lineage. He could work with Abraham's lineage because Abraham said yes. And he gave him promises. The blessing of Abraham are the promises God gave to Abraham. They basically covered his, his prosperity in the earth realm and his lineage, his, his promise of the lineage that God was going to give him where Jesus would come into the earth realm through his lineage. Quite in, incredible promises. Galatians chapter 3 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit or meaning able to be born again. By faith, Jesus was coming through Abraham, which we would be able to partake of the Spirit, become born again, children of God. But all the promises, the blessing given to Abraham are all the promises God gave him. Now, they're listed in several places, but I told the church to read this once a week. I won't ask who did it, but you need to keep it before you. Deuteronomy 28. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. Who's going to do that? When God made covenant with Abraham, he says, I will make you. I will bless you. The earth curse system says, now, Adam, by the own pain, your own pain, <laughs> painful toil and sweat. You'll have to make your way in life. But now we see as Abraham made covenant, it gave God legal jurisdiction to make Abraham, to be involved there. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. As he promised on oath. Who, who did he promise that to? On oath? Abraham. Abraham. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience. Verse 10, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. How are they going to see God? The next verse, verse 11, how are they going to see God? The Lord will what? How's the world going to see you? I mean, see God in you? Is that what it, not, is that what it says? Abundant prosperity. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity. I mean, some people say prosperity is good, but abundant prosperity is better, right? <laughs> In the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground. Now he's talking to an agricultural society. You can put whatever in there. The Lord will open the heavens, a storehouse of his bounty, and send rain on your land in season to bless all the work of your hands. Why the, your hands? Because you have the covenant. You have the blessing. When you put your hands on something, it changes jurisdiction. It gives God the legal jurisdiction to get involved with whatever you get involved with. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from how many? <laughs> Folks, this is not politically correct. You're supposed to be wealthy. You're supposed to have more than enough. There's assignments to be taken care of. There's things to do, but you know what? It speaks of God. I mean, who wants to serve a God if his kids are all broke and poverty stricken? <laughs> right? <laughs> who wants to do that, right? You will lend to many nations, but borrow from how many? <laughs> Say it again, none. <laughs> none. And so, Pastor Gary, how come so many people haven't, uh, haven't tapped into that? Well, first, they've never been taught. They've been taught the religion, the vow of poverty. You can't talk about money in church. You're in idolatry. Oh, no, no. When you don't have money, you serve money. You're always running trying to find it. Every thought of every day is how can I, I'll take that job, or I hate that job, but I'll take it for money. But you step out of your identity, step out of your uniqueness, step out of your talents, out of your, and you take, you, you sign up for slavery and never accomplish what God had for you. The Lord will make you the head. He will make you the head. The head has all the ideas. He'll give you supernatural concepts, ideas, favor, and wisdom. Not the tail. That's where the church has been living at, is the tail. Just following the world, hoping to get a few scraps off the table. 
Friend, they should be coming to us. The enemy has done a propaganda job for years and years and years about lies about God and lies about what he wants for you. Not this group, though. Not this group. It says you will always be at the top. Always be at the top. <laughs> You'll always be at the top. You'll always be at the And never at the bottom. I like that. Never at the bottom. My God is my provider. He knows where the harvest is. He knows where the green fields are. He knows where to lead you. He is my shepherd. He'll show me where it's at. <laughs> 